Tomo News presents. You can't eat that! <coughs> China food safety. Girl vomits after eating paraffin wax dumplings. Chinese woman Miss Lu became suspicious after cooking some sticky rice dumplings that she bought in her local supermarket. She found a white substance floating on the surface after cooking them and concluded that it was probably paraffin wax. Her daughter then returned home from school, ate the tangyuan without her mother knowing, and then vomited. The supermarket said it was the fault of the manufacturer, while the manufacturer said the white material was palm oil. Food safety has been one of the hottest topics in China in recent years. Worms found in KFC chicken wings. If you're eating right now, do yourself a favor and put down your food before you watch this. Authorities in India shut down a KFC after they verified a complaint that worms were found in their chicken in October 2012. Now a woman in China, identified only by her surname Lu, found the same creepy crawlers wiggling in her leftover chicken wings that she bought from a Guangzhou KFC. Miss Liu told Hong Kong's Apple Daily that she and her children ordered takeout from KFC Saturday afternoon. After a few hours, she went to finish the food and found tiny white worms squirming around on her New Orleans-style chicken wings. Liu immediately contacted the media. One reporter came by, cut open one of the chicken wings and found six or seven live worms in the meat. They waited till the manager turned up at the greasy chicken shop to file a complaint, but Miss Lou was only compensated with a refund and another free combo meal. Seriously? Lou found the response unacceptable. She didn't even receive an apology from the manager. A spokesman for the KFC restaurant told the reporter that the chicken wings were grilled on high heat and there were no problems with the food processing or the management. Cooking oil in China is recycled from the gutters. Chinese authorities have battled to get rid of gutter oil in the country's kitchens for years, cracking down on illegal oil production rings since 2011. But now it seems the black market oil in street-side stalls could be used to power up airplane engines. With Chinese cooking being so heavy on the oil, some enterprising people thought up a cheap way to produce it – by recycling garbage. First, they scoop up waste containing used oil or animal fat from sewers, gutters or dumpsters and take it to processing plants. After the mixture is refined and processed, the oil is repackaged and sold to vendors in small restaurants at below market prices. As reprocessed sewage, gutter oil contains carcinogens, which may lead to cancer and other health problems. But with the disgusting oil served up in cheap street eats, unsuspecting foodies may be none the wiser. Other countries have long used recycled oil not for cooking, but for industrial purposes, something China only caught on to in recent years. In 2014, Boeing partnered with a Chinese aircraft company to turn gutter oil into sustainable biofuel. After a Hainan Airlines flight flew from Shanghai to Beijing last March on a 50-50 mix of gutter oil and jet fuel, China might very well turn gutter oil into gold. Dead rodent found in Subway Sandwich in Oregon Finding something nasty and unexpected in your food at a restaurant is the last thing you want. When Jay Armstead and Matt Jones went to the Subway restaurant in Lincoln City, Oregon for their lunch break, they were shocked to find a rodent in the spinach of a sandwich. Jones documented the incident by snapping a picture and a Subway employee gave them a full refund. Following the discovery of a rodent in the spinach, the entire contaminated stock was disposed of and the restaurant passed a health check. Unfortunately, for previous customers, they unknowingly ate spinach that came in contact with the rodent, which is believed to have gotten into the sandwich from the bagged spinach rather than coming from somewhere inside the restaurant. Jones reportedly called Subway headquarters customer service to complain and ask that other customers be notified about the rodent, but he said they laughed and said that would be impossible. Cheryl Connell, director of Lincoln County Health and Human Services, said that although it's not very appetizing, the risk of someone getting sick from eating spinach from the same bin as a rodent is pretty low. China selling 40-year-old cultural revolution meat. In China, 
things get better with age. And for a society so focused on history, it's easy to understand the latest craze sweeping the country. It's not vintage clothes or cars. This time, it's vintage historical meats. Chinese authorities seized some 800 tons of smuggled frozen meat in Hunan province in an operation that is part of a month-long crackdown on the illegal trade. The confiscated meat included poultry and beef, supposedly worth 10 million yuan, or $1.6 million. Some of the packages were rotten, while others were found thawing in boiling hot shipping containers. But what the Chinese got really excited about was the batch of meat they found from the 1970s. Meat that was packed and stamped during the height of Mao's Cultural Revolution. The vintage meat was set to be distributed to restaurants, retailers, and supermarkets across China. CCP officials announced that the recovered Mao era meat will be placed on display next to the slumbering leader in the Mao Mausoleum. Well, maybe not. Chinese officials claim to have seized more than 100,000 tons of smuggled frozen meat worth nearly $500 million in crackdowns across 14 provinces and detained 21 smuggling groups. Girl bites into McDonald's chicken wrap and tastes... frog? Like any kid, this 10-year-old girl was excited to eat at McDonald's, but after taking her first bite, it wasn't exactly a happy meal. On October 31st, Cordelia Buckley and her dad made a snack stop at McDonald's. After a long day trip in the car, they ordered what Cordelia probably thought would be a tasty, tender, big flavor sweet chili chicken wrap. They got their McDonald's meal and were ready to head home. Her dad driving, Cordelia dug into her bag and pulled out her food to feast. But when she bit into the hefty wrap, she immediately tasted something funny. Well, it wasn't so funny, actually, when she put down the wrap and opened it up to find a dead frog. A Halloween prank, maybe? Disgusted, Cordelia's dad says he called McDonald's to complain, but the manager simply offered a refund and asked for the frog back to investigate. A McDonald's spokesman says there's no reason to believe the frog came from their restaurant. The frog, four inches long, is now being preserved in the family's freezer. Meanwhile, poor little Cordelia has reportedly sworn off McDonald's forever. Whoever said frog tastes like chicken, anyway. Hey Golden Corral customers, there's a free buffet by the dumpster. Brandon Huber, who says he's a cook at the Golden Corral in Port Orange, Florida, was disturbed by the restaurant's practice of hiding food by the dumpster when the health inspector visited. So, he recorded this video. Brandon Huber, I'm an employee at the Golden Corral right here out in Port Orange, Florida, 907 Taylor Branch Road. Um, right now, we're currently undergoing an inspection. Right now, I'm walking around the building. I just left the front door. I'm walking up to the dumpster. Apparently, what my company likes to do to get ready for inspections is put their food by the dumpsters. So, I'm outside, here's the dumpster area, I'm walking into it right now, and this is what my company likes to do with their food for inspection. This hamburger meat, look at all these flies, it's disgusting. All this food, all these baby back ribs. To me, this is disgusting. This is what my company likes to do to get ready for inspection. They like to put their food by the dumpster. I'm an employee here, been working here for a long time, and I don't feel that this is right. I mean, look at it. What do you think? No? Daylight. Out here. Dumpster. Let me get a little closer. Let me show you just how disgusting this is. You know, all you can eat ribs by the dumpster. All you can eat ribs. The video was posted by YouTuber Ben Jamin on July 1st. Jamin says Brandon complained to management and then the county health department, but got nowhere. The same day, Jamin created an eBay auction for the food stored by the dumpster. He says he was contacted by police for blackmailing the restaurant's owner. On July 7th, 
Jamin posted a second video featuring Brandon. So, I just showed you a little something that my management just brought upon me. I cook this food every day, and now I see what is involved into it. And to me, as an employee here, I would not eat this stuff. If this is what the Golden Corral and Port Orange does, I don't want to think what every other Golden Corral around the world does. So, I really don't know what to say. I mean, I'm telling you this now. I'm scared of my employment. I don't know who to tell. I mean, but I don't want to cook this food. I don't feel safe with it. Now, my management is going to wheel it back into the coolers after the inspection like nothing ever happened. Now, I'm trying to let you know the real story. So, you tell me as a customer, as anybody that has anything to do with Golden Corral, would you eat this food here? Me as an employee, I'm telling you that I'm not. I want it. I'm definitely not. British Chef offers free human flesh burgers for Walking Dead fans. Go on, give that tasty human meat a try. Ah! Ah! No, not actual human meat. But if you were ever curious, British chef James Tomlinson can help you experience the closest thing to actual cannibalism. The chef did his research without actually chomping on a human. He got one idea from a New York Times experiment in the 1920s. William Seabrook, who was a journalist for the Times, convinced the doctor to cut a chunk of flesh from his male body so he could try it. Seabrook described the human meat as somewhat similar to veal. And Issei Sagawa, a real cannibal from the 80s, described the taste as raw tuna fish sushi. So the British chef mixed veal, chicken liver, bone marrow, and pork, and ta-da! Faux cannibal burger! The new menu item is part of a promotional campaign for the upcoming season of the hit TV show The Walking Dead, in which the main characters could be, spoiler alert, stuck in a cannibalistic camp. Starting next Tuesday, Chef Tomlinson will offer the burger to adventurous diners for free at his mysterious pop-up restaurant Terminus Tavern in East London. A Wendy's employee was arrested after an Atlanta, Georgia customer found a half-smoked joint in her cheeseburger. Amy Cyber was smoking a marijuana cigarette while at work early last month when it somehow fell into the burger. Too bad for the unsuspecting customer who picked up a single cheeseburger combo from the burger joint, but instead got a joint burger. The woman hurried back to the restaurant, reported the incident to the manager, and called the police. We imagine Cyber probably freaked out a little bit when she realized just what she had done. New Jersey authorities have cracked down on bars and restaurants serving fake alcohol to patrons after an investigation revealed some disgusting findings. The year-long sting, codenamed Operation Swill, discovered dozens of businesses have been serving bogus booze. Some even sold rubbing alcohol and caramel coloring as whiskey, spiking both drinks and profits. Others had passed off tap and dirty river water as alcohol for mixed drinks. Undercover officers with the Division of Alcoholic Beverage Control secretly took samples before conducting raids on 29 businesses across the state. Among the restaurants raided were 13 different TGI Fridays franchises, all operated by the Briad Group. Rubbing alcohol, additives, tainted water. Maybe this explains New Jersey people's brain damage. Tokyo-based Waku Group, which runs a chain of Japanese-style fried pork cutlet restaurants, is taking flack after one of the group's locations used leftover vegetables meant for the rubbish bin. A branch of the chain located in the upscale Ginza area of Tokyo was reported to be using the past-due foodstuffs. This particular location offered a buffet-style selection of fresh vegetables to complement meals. However, when the fresh veggies ran out, they would switch over to the post-dated stock. The store manager and head chef reportedly gave the green light to the scheme. The chain's head office commented on the inappropriate procedures, noting that they are going to make efforts to restore the public's trust and put staff through a comprehensive retraining program.